When Tim was four years old, we began to discover that Tim was slower than a lot of other children. Uh, he was not physically formed exactly as other children. So we had him tested a number of times. We couldn't figure out what it was that was his problem. And finally, he was diagnosed as having the Cornelia DeLange syndrome. Discovery and, and how to treat these children was not fully known at that time. So we began to go to different seminars and, and symposiums. He began to develop mental handicaps, if you will. He was slower than most. Physically, he was not developing as quickly as, as other children. And over a period of four or five years, it became apparent that he was not progressing mentally. Those who dream by day are cognizant of many things that escape those who dream only by night. Edgar Allan Poe. I'm Stan Waterman. I have a wonderful story to tell you about a young man. A young man whose family were all divers. Because of problems that were inherent, he thought that he would not be able to dive, and so did his parents. He knew what a fine experience that was. He was determined to give it a try. His parents, perhaps a little reluctant to begin with, nonetheless felt it was a challenge that they would like to have him make if he could stand up under it, and he did. He had accepted that challenge, and through his own determination, pushed himself beyond the levels where he thought he could go, and others thought he could go. He was able to grow with the possibility of many other challenges and now ready to try and meet them. I hope that his example will inspire many others because that taking of the challenge, take the current when it serves, grow with it, that is what he did. Hi, I'm Guy Harvey, artist, diver, angler, conservationist, family man. I do it all. I'm also on the board of advisors of the Oceans for Youth Foundation. We take five mentally challenged children on a training diving expedition. The toughest part of this expedition was to coordinate everybody from all over the world to end up in the Cayman Islands. What happened was that uh, you, know, you have these uh, young uh, people and they're going to be instructed in the joys and the pleasures and the wonderments that the ocean can present, and they're going to be approaching all of this with a certain trepidation, a certain fear. And uh, for it all to work, you have to have instructors, people who do skin diving. It's their life, it's their joy. On the internet, they read about the camps going to be done last year, particularly. And they showed up from all over the world, from the Philippines from every place where the sun is warm and skin diving abounds. They came to, uh, to be part of it, to be part of helping these kids experience something that they had never had a chance to experience before. And that's what this film is about, because you're going to see some of these kids. You're going to see some of them uh, experiencing that very thing. And, it becomes very, very uh, moving. And so you don't have to keep your eyes open that heavily because it will hit you with a smack. The first year of coming to Little Cayman, we had gone on these family trips for probably about four or five years prior to that where Timmy wasn't able to dive, and, and Ron, Ron got him in the water and really made Timmy comfortable. And I think we all started to think that maybe this was something that Timmy could do. 
and my, my dad and Ron had had conversations that this was Ron's dream as well, is to, to work with special needs or handicapped people. And it's always been my father's dream to help Timmy and enable him to be the best that he can be and to give him every opportunity to do the things that he wants to do. One word frees us all of the weight and pain of life. That word is love. Sophocles. The first time that Timmy wanted to go in the water, I was afraid, but he was going with my father, who I knew would take care of him and my father's an excellent diver. So I was afraid for myself, but I wasn't afraid for Timmy, because I knew that my father would do anything and everything to take care of him, which he did. And they went down, and it was fabulous for my father and for Timmy. It, it, was, it was hard, but it also made me so very happy for Timmy that this was something that he was able to do. As a mother, it was very, you know, it was scary but I didn't want to hold him back because it was something that he wanted to do. And again, I had given him to my dad to do it with him, and I knew that he would take care of him and keep him safe, and he did. And then my husband and I were standing on the dock watching, and I was crying, and I said, do you think he'll ever drive a car? <laughs> and my husband said, one step at a time, don't get carried away. So it was a huge accomplishment for Timmy. So of course now the world opened up for me. If he could do this, maybe he can do the next thing that he wants to do. So that's how I felt the first time that he went in the water. Timmy would come on these vacation trips and, and basically he'd just kind of hang out at the resort and he'd have fun, don't get me wrong, he'd have a lot of fun. By the time the end of the week came, he'd know everybody there. It, it hurt everybody to see Timmy not being able to take part in, in what everybody else in the family does. What he wanted to do was to be part of the family. And, and part of the family, being part of the family, meant that you had to be a scuba diver. Scuba diving is, is something that a family can do. Um, family can do no matter how old or how young you are. It's not competitive. It's beautiful to see the underwater environment, the fish. It's fun. And the destinations, the places we go, are some of the most beautiful places in the world. We would take off to go scuba diving in the morning. And Timmy would get very angry and storm off the dock because he couldn't go. It was nice to see Timmy overcoming challenges in his life and taking a challenge on. And, and this was a challenge that he definitely took on. And he took, he took this challenge on with a, with a full head of steam. He wasn't going to fail at this. I know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestioned ability of a man to elevate his life by conscious endeavor, Henry David Thoreau. It was my dream to become a scuba diver. Ocean for Youth made my dream come true. It then made me happy because I'd be on the top side, the top of the ocean, snorkeling. And I was missing out, diving with my family, going down below because my brother, Dobby, Pete, Rory, Wynn, Katie, Alicia, Dom, all got the card, and I was being on the top side. And I was stayed up a lot of weight night to do the pool work, to get my dive card. And here it is. We are doing the impossible. The impossible can only happen when it comes from the heart. Hello, I'm Wayne Hassan, and I'm with Oceans for Youth. 
We were conceived in 1999 with an idea that we want to bring education to young people about the marine environment. This camp was conceived because of Timmy, obviously, and his grandfather, which really had the wish of, uh, of sharing the experience that Timmy had with other young people that are similar to him. We assembled a group of instructors from around the world to come here to Little Cayman to teach these young people. And they're, they're very excited about what they're doing. I'm excited about what I'm doing because I could never imagine until today that something like this was possible. One of the challenges of this expedition was to pair up the right student with the right instructor. Hello, my name is Mark Young. I'm a paddy dive professional, dive instructor, and I'm down here in the lovely Cayman Islands doing some work for the Oceans for Youth program. Uh, we're teaching some cognitively impaired children to uh, appreciate the sea. Um, we're hoping that some of them will be able to progress to being certified divers. Uh, and short of that, uh, Patty has a program called Discover Scuba Diving uh, that allows them to enjoy the beauty of the sea without having to go through all of the challenges that are involved in an open water course. Uh, I was originally contacted by Ruth from the uh, Oceans for Youth Foundation and uh, was asked to join the team down here uh, as one of the instructors. And it's really exciting to teach these kids to dive. I love it. My passion is sharing diving with other people, with, other, with children, and I, I love the teaching aspect of it. It's just brilliant to be able to share that, to see the, the turning point when they go from uh, being uncomfortable to being confident in the water. We're going to start out not inviting the parents, but we're going to take these young people in the swimming pool and introduce them to a mass fins and snorkel to see how they do. This afternoon, we're going to take them out in the ocean. We're going to look in the water for the first time. for youth deals with young kids and if you're going to inculcate anybody uh, with any of these qualities you have to start when they're young you can't smile with that snorkel in your mouth you are so happy she's so happy she's smiling and when you smile when you're smiling and you come out you get water around here and, you, and, and anyway you got to close your mouth around the snorkel and keep that water from coming in because when you come up and clear that snorkel, you can breathe through that too, okay? Hi, my name's Liz. Welcome to this is Little Cayman here. We're out on the Jackson Bay section of the Bloody Bay Marine Park in Little Cayman. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take the kids snorkeling. It's gonna be their kind of their first experience in the water here. And we just think it's a beautiful day here to take the kids out and get them, get them wet and having some fun. This is where uh, Captain Teach, or uh, Blackbeard as they called him, had a big battle right here. His his, uh, his pirates were partying on the island and uh, some people come across the island and sank his ships and right off the shore right there there's some, uh, there's some shipwrecks and it was a bloody battle so that's why they call it Bloody Bay. The initial reaction of these kids to the open ocean was astounding. Guess what they did? They made a beeline for the deep water. All of a sudden the shackles were just released from their bodies and they just felt free. Hi I'm Leanne, I'm Tim's mom. I can't say anything more than we could not be any more fortunate than where we are today. The kids did fabulous. Their first day in the water, snorkeling, they saw parrotfish, uh, flying fish. Um, 
uh, barracudas. They saw everything. They did fabulous. They got so acclimated to the water. We're here for them. It's their opportunity to learn to be in the water. They all did such a wonderful job, and we're so proud of all of them and happy for them that they're doing so well and having such a great experience. And now I'm going to take a dunk because it's very hot, and we're going to go have lunch. We took these young people in the ocean with a mass fins and snorkel, and they did incredible. We saw some amazing things. Today, we're going to introduce them to scuba. It's going to be in the swimming pool. We're not going to invite the parents, but we're going to have some fun with these guys. Few things are impossible to diligence and skill. Great works are performed not by strength, but perseverance. Samuel Johnson. I remember when I dove into the pool. I'm in the deep end and I was too young to be there, but if you looked like you could swim and knew what you were doing, you were allowed to stay in the deep end. So I dove in and I went all the way down to the bottom and I'm there and I'm waiting now to go back up to the top. But to go back up to the top, what you have to do is to, you have to kick your feet and give yourself a push. Never occurred to me. Shows you Mr. Demo stupid is really at work here in this end. So I'm floating literally up to the top of the pool and I'm losing, you know, I'm going to breathe water inside in no time at all and I'm going in. And I'm, I'm about to yell for help when I get to the very top. And, <laughs> and I hit the edge of the pool. So nobody knew what the predicament was that I was in. Nobody even saw. And I got a good chance to use the deep end again. <laughs> Yesterday, we went out snorkeling. Open ocean snorkeling, as one of the ladies would call it. And Holly and I had never, ever been out to do anything like that before. And to watch Holly under the water, when I got close enough to be next to her, just swimming around in all her glory and looking at all the beautiful fish and being out where we never would have ever ventured before, it was just so wonderful. It was just the most amazing thing. I wished I had my camera at the time just to get her legs on them. <laughs> but I didn't. But it, this never would have happened otherwise. And even though she has disabilities, as, and I tell her often, there's the majority of the population that don't have disabilities that would never ever have these opportunities. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. And she's having the time of her life. And just to see the enjoyment on her face and to see her through her eyes, all the things that she's seeing, it's fantastic. Hi, I'm Liz Blangino, and we have Sam Luce. That's how you say your last name, right? L-U-C-E. Sam and I have been hanging out here for a couple days, and Sam is learning how to scuba dive. It's his first experience in the water, and Oceans for Youth and Patty instructors are getting together with all the kids to have some fun in Little Cayman and go diving. And we went out snorkeling uh, and had a great time snorkeling. We went pretty far out. Did, we were the furthest people to go out. And what did we see, um, Sam? Do you remember what we saw yesterday? Yeah. Do you remember the big gray thing in the sand that was called a sting, a stingray, right? So yesterday was a lot of fun, and we um, got to go out with Sam and his dad and enjoy the fish and enjoy the ocean. And then uh, yesterday, after the ocean, what did we do? And did we get in the pool? And what were we doing in the pool? We had a scuba diving lesson. Like with Timmy, um, we've been diving with him. Ron, Captain Ron and myself have been diving with Tim for about three years now. And we've got to see his progression from snorkeling and uh, the whole way through from snorkeling, getting in the uh, water at two, three feet on just the shoreline, all the way taking him to the Bloody Bay Wall here in Little Cayman to around 40 feet on beautiful sites that we have here. In terms of his personal progression in the uh, ocean, uh, we've gotten to see him. Uh, it's been immaculate. Um, he's been he's been clearing his mask like a little professional. He's been really working on his buoyancy. It seems this year, especially with working through the um, the hoops and everything in the pool, which Sam has been doing. So to see the progression of the kids from from the beginning to now, I mean even. 
not only in the ocean do you see the difference, but you can see the difference in Timmy's behavior and his attitude towards uh, just life in general, his connection with people. You can see that it's changed his whole attitude in, in terms of everything. So it's not only just an exciting vacation for him to take, it's, a, it's an exciting adventure for him for his own personal life in terms of him working at home, he's got a job that he works at. So responsibility and behavior and your confidence level, even the confidence level with meeting Sam here in the past couple days. Yeah, if you know we're hanging out, we're starting to really get to know each other a little bit more. Um, you start to, it's like a conch, you're starting to come out of your shell a little bit more and you seem to um, relax a little bit more and you get, you're starting to become very comfortable underwater. Like yesterday in the pool, we were practicing to clear the mask and take off, uh, not take off the mask, but just to clear the mask. And we had to do it a few times. And uh, after a few times, after being one of the hardest skills, you got it down great. But what we really want to do is we want to get out into the ocean today for our first time on the experience on the island and then work our way up to starting to get to the boat. And then we start on the boat tomorrow. So it should be a lot of fun. My name's Adrian Giddes, uh, and this is Jess. I'm uh, an instructor here in Little Cayman. Uh, this is the first time that I have that I've done any teaching like this with any special special people. But it's uh, really a pretty cool experience. I'm not really doing it for for Jess's sake, to be honest. I'm doing it for my sake because I'm getting so much out of this. It's just a, an amazing experience to take somebody diving that's never been in the ocean before. So. Every, every, every day is a new day and every, every hour is a new hour because uh, Jess is learning so much from uh, this experience. Um, we're spending a lot of time in the pool right now and she's learning some skills and she's doing really well. My student's uh, name is Scott and when I first met Scott, uh, he's fairly shy but he has an amazing laugh. He laughs all the time so he and I are always laughing together and I wanted to teach Scott to dive. He, he had actually had experience in the water before and was still a little hesitant about going in the water and doing all the skills and doing things properly. And today was a turning point for us. Yesterday we played a little bit, get the kids comfortable in the pool. And he was okay with that, but we weren't sure how he was going to handle the skills. And this morning we talked about a little bit at breakfast and he was Oh, I don't think I'll be able to do this. I don't think I'll be able to do that. And we get him in the pool, and he was fine. It's so much fun to see these kids accomplish things. Uh, he was nervous about stepping off the edge of the pool. We, we did a, a deep water entry, it's called. And it took a little coaxing, but once he did it, he's okay with it. Now we're taking a little break. We'll go back in the pool here in a little bit, and he'll get to do that again. And through this repetition, he'll, he'll get confidence in his skills and he'll know that he's okay down there. I was very confident that he would be able to do, go into water without too much problem with the dive. So I, I was sure he was in, in very capable hands and he would have a good time because sometimes that, uh, without the parent there, they actually uh, learn quicker or they pay more attention to. With the parents, sometimes they want to uh, uh, talk back or not, not really talk back, that's not the right word, but uh, don't listen as much as they do with uh, a neutral instructor and so I thought it was in very good hands. Tell me not in mournful numbers life is but an empty dream for the soul is dead that slumbers and things are not what they seem. Okay folks here we are day two. Day one was amazing. We finished up yesterday taking them in the ocean right there at Bloody Bay and they had a phenomenal experience in the ocean. We saw lots of really interesting marine creatures and they really got excited. So today we're going to take them in the water with scuba. We put together the organization that would allow us to uh, design and build a, a uh, camp which we are now here this year uh, for the first time. This is our trial run for the mentally challenged children. Um, there were many meetings. There were hundreds and hundreds of hours of meetings and discussions. And we had to reach out to other organizations who deal with cognitively challenged children to find out who was in their organization. Who would they recommend? We had certain criteria that obviously we had to meet to put this school together for this year because this isn't a swimming school. We're not here to teach children how to swim. 
We're here to teach children how to enjoy and join in the life underwater of scuba diving. And so they had to have, for instance, as a minimum, they had to be someone who's comfortable in the water. Teaching everybody how to put, remove their mask and put it back on again. Way out here in the deep, deep ocean. beautiful Owen Island, which is a small island on the island. And I'm with my grandpa. My grandson, Timmy. You get to know Timmy pretty well. He's, he's everybody's friend. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna teach these kids how to scuba dive in the salt water today. It's gonna go well. Good day finished. Tomorrow we're going to go diving in a big deep ocean uh, for the first proper diving experience. So we're all looking forward to that. All the kids done great today. Now, when it came to putting on the scuba gear, getting serious here, the instructors really didn't know what to expect from the kids. But after about half an hour, a bit of floundering around and immobility at some points, they became accustomed to their conditions. And of course, water. When you're in the water, you're supported and your movements become a little more fluid and you get comfy with the breathing apparatus. And the fact that there's so much to look at, which is also a distraction, the kids became very adapted to the environment. And in turn, the uh, instructors, of course, felt a level of security that they didn't anticipate having so soon in the expedition. It was a fantastic sight to see. I I'm amazed by this. I, I want to change our tagline for our group. And it says, better than I thought. Every time I talk to one of the parents or anybody, and I say, how are the kids doing, you know, a particular exercise? And they go, oh man, they did so much better than I thought they would. You know, we're all blown away by that. They're just exceeding our expectations every time you turn around. And this is the beauty of saying to them, no limitations here. Go for it. Go for the brass ring. We're showing you the brass ring. What we have to do is find a way to get there going to take us there and they do that they're doing it over and over time and time again and they're they're expanding their horizon what's good about this is they are now thinking of themselves as if they were just like everybody else and they are and underwater they are they, they don't have a handicap they do not have a handicap they're as good or better than anybody else ever could be that's a wonderful thing for them because we're not there to tell them, oh no, you can't do that because you're handicapped. They're going, yeah, I can do that. I'm gonna do that, and then they go do it. <laughs> and we're surprised by that, and that sort of shocks me. I'm, it just shows me that we're the limitation, they're not. Leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. William Shakespeare. Alright, here we go. Day number three of diving for the boys and girls. Um, we're going to head around to the other side of the island, try to get out of the wind a little bit, and do two dives this morning, and then the kids have some fishing for the afternoon. Scott and I have been rocking away at his uh, certification. Almost there. He did two quizzes this morning. That's why he's got two beads on, celebrating his success. Uh, passed both of his quizzes. We're not doing any skills. We got a couple more things we need to do before he finishes his course in the water. Yeah. He's doing amazing, absolutely amazing. We're all very proud of the fact that he's been able to get through a certification. So we're going to relax this morning, just have a couple fun dives, let him enjoy the water, and then tomorrow morning, the first dive, we'll do a couple more skills and get him finished up. 
should be a good day. I am so pleased to know what is happening with the young people who are being taken into the sea for the first time. You will be ambassadors yourself when you go back to your schools, to your own gang, to your contemporaries, and tell them what you have done. There will be many others who will want to follow in your footsteps and gradually, gradually will become as an ocean planet, a planet also that has a large part of our own people in it, experiencing it, and growing with the experience. Fingers crossed, everything's gonna go wonderful, and uh, we look forward to seeing them under the water. This is the big test. This is the one where we're gonna get on a boat, we're gonna go out along the wall, you know, this great magical Bloody Bay Wall, they call it, which is the most beautiful place in the whole world, and we're gonna have them put on their gear, we're gonna help them, we're gonna assist them. We've got parents on the boat, and they're all nervous because, boy, this is the real deal. This is, we're gonna put them in the water, and they're going down and they're gonna be down 30 feet, or they're gonna be down 35 feet, and they're gonna be able to swim out over the edge of the wall, and they're gonna be able to look down as far as you can see. The parents that are here are beginning to learn something that they were afraid to do before, and that is to let go, to let these kids be free in a safe environment, to challenge themselves and to grow, to stop doing for them and teach them how to do for themselves. Most parents, because they're loving and they're caring and, and they've had to protect their child from hurting themselves or being harmed by others, are very fearful of that. But they're discovering that these, these young people are very capable of learning new things, of challenging themselves and overcoming those challenges. And every time they do that, they grow. They just grow magically. It's amazing. Their whole life gets bigger and, and their whole broad, the envelope of life, they keep stepping out and, and expanding the borders of their, of their world. And the kids got all dressed up in their brand new dive goddess outfits, just amazingly sparkling and, and their greatest designs in the world. They looked great. They put their gear on and over they went. They jumped in the water. Wow. What happens when they go in the water? Well, now they forget everything that they've been taught because they're in a brand new environment. So here they are, they're, they're fearful and they're holding on to their dive instructor. They won't let go, it's a strangulation hold. Uh, they've got their hand over their mouthpiece and they're doing the dog paddle and they're thrashing with their legs and all of that. And the job of the instructor is to get them calmed down. Now stop and be comfortable, you're okay. You're breathing, you're fine, everything is okay. And the first 10 minutes, the first 15 minutes, they're swimming like novices again. They're just, they're just sort of not out of control, but not in control. The most amazing thing, it, it'll just blow your mind when you, when you see it. Because these kids in the next 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes underwater, began to transition from that person in an environment they've never been into before and this fearful person into someone that's perfectly comfortable underwater and their profiles began to get better and they were laid out very flat in the water and they were breathing easily and normally and they weren't holding on to their instructor any longer. They were actually focused on the things that were around them and they were looking at the fish and they were looking at the turtles and they were looking at the moray eels and they were looking at the magnificent eagle rays and it's that whole transition from a complete novice one minute and 30 minutes later they're comfortable underwater. We have a, we have a dive instructor, Mark, who came all the way from Papua New Guinea, the other side of the world, to participate in this camp. They're all volunteers. They all do this at their own expense to come here and share this activity, this wonderful opportunity with these, with these young adults. Every great and commanding moment in the annals of the world is the triumph of some enthusiasm. Ralph Waldo Emerson. 
Welcome to day four. As we expected, yesterday was pretty incredible. We took the parents along and they got to see their kids firsthand and join the ocean. It was quite remarkable. I got to tell you, these instructors are having just as good a time. And by the way, these kids, even though mentally challenged, are doing incredible. In fact, as well as anybody I've ever seen dive. Hi, my name is Dan Hamilton and I'm an adaptive physical education teacher for Cardinal Cushion in Hanover, Massachusetts. I was contacted by Oceans for Youth Foundation to be the activities coordinator for this wonderful camp. I've met two new individuals. I've known Timmy, Jesse, and Holly through my school and uh, they were invited down on the camp and uh, since we got here we have been uh, working on getting to know each other and doing different activities that would do that. Um, some team building activities that would help with getting them to know each other and working well because it's very important to work together as a team when you're scuba diving and working together in pairs. Um, when I was given the opportunity to work the camp I jumped right over it. Uh, this is a wonderful great opportunity for these these kids. Uh, most people would think that they never would have something like this that they could do and uh, because of Oceans for Youth Foundation uh, they're actually able to to do this wonderful sport. It's, some of the shy individuals are starting to come out of their shells which is wonderful to see and uh, they're becoming very comfortable in the water and uh, to be able to have this opportunity to do something that not everybody can do and uh, the wonderful instructors that we have that are walking them through this and giving them this wonderful opportunity is, is absolutely fabulous and I, I'm excited to be a part of it. dream. Aristotle from Diogenes Laertes, Lives of Eminent Philosophy. Jessie is the youngest of, of our children and she actually came to us um, as a foster child, as an infant. Round two, we started to see signs that she wasn't really developing the way we thought was, you know, age appropriate. And we had her tested, and um, the test showed that we were on the right track, that things weren't really what they should be. When Sam was born, he looked healthy and normal. And when he was about a year and a half old, he, everybody else was growing up and Sam wasn't. We had him diagnosed, and he was diagnosed with CDLS. We went to several different doctors. In fact, we changed one because we didn't like his attitude, the way he treated her. She was in a special class for middle school, but right around that age was very difficult for her. And we knew we needed to do something. And the, the schools were great, they tried their best, but they weren't able to give her what our daughter needed. And we ended up after a long process, but she ended up at Cardinal Cushing in Hanover. Um, and that was the answer to a lot of prayers. I just couldn't understand why the school system wasn't capable of dealing with this child and, until it began to dawn on me that the school system, the educational system, is not set up to deal with special needs children. They just aren't because there are so many different kinds of special needs. This was breaking my heart. He's met his dive instructor who's challenged him from right off. Um, I stepped back and she just took over and she said, Sam, you're gonna do this, Sam, you're gonna do that. I was a little worried about snorkeling um, the first day, if he was gonna be okay with that. And we ended up snorkeling the farthest of anybody. We went way out and we saw things that were fantastic. And once again, Sam being a sponge just took it all in. Of course, it'll take a couple weeks to get it all back out. Uh, we first found out Holly was cognitively impaired. Uh, a few years ago, she's 19 now, she'll be 20 in December. But it wasn't until almost two years ago that she started going to the Cardinal Cushing School in Hanover, Massachusetts. 
which is a, it's a 365 day residential program. Through that school they have many programs that they involve the children in, vocationally, academically, and it's been wonderful. And through the school, Holly's had some opportunities. The first of being was uh, Special Olympics, is a big part of her life. She went to the World Games, Special Olympics Games in Nagano, Japan last February for two weeks and never would have had that opportunity had it not been for the school she's in and the programs that she's involved in. And as a result of that, along came this opportunity through Oceans for Youth. And when she first told me about it, I, I thought she was joking. And I thought, yeah, here we go again. <laughs> but after doing some research, it turned out to be true and I got to tag along besides. And uh, it's been absolutely wonderful. I don't have to worry about where she is and what she's doing at all times. The staff, the divers, the other families, everybody's been terrific. You couldn't ask for anything more. It's just been never in our wildest dreams would we have expected to been so lucky to be invited to be involved in such a wonderful program. We searched and we found a school called the Cardinal Cushing School for Mentally Challenged Children in uh, Hanover, Massachusetts he was accepted by the school. And it was a very difficult time in the family life because it meant that he had to go and live there full time. And for my daughter, Leanne, that was a very difficult choice. She loved him dearly and I think in some ways she didn't realize that even she was part of the problem because she did for him rather than teach him how to do for himself. And for her to make the decision to give him up and let him go live somewhere else where she would see him on an irregular basis, not every day, was very difficult. And I finally convinced her that it was the right thing to do. Character cannot be developed in ease and quiet, only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened ambition inspired, and success achieved, Helen Keller. I've always been interested in working with kids. I love kids. I think they've, there are, not only are they our future, but their, their, their spirit, their, their energy, um, to bring that out in someone who's cognitively impaired is, it's a little bit more of a challenge to work with someone who's just got something a little extra, something, it's just something a little different, something a little special, really makes it beneficial. Personally, it makes me feel much more fulfilled. It makes me feel grateful. It makes me appreciate what I have. There's, there's a lot of things that it does, not just for them, but I think for me and the instructors and the families, I mean, Tomorrow's probably gonna be our last day. You're gonna get me crying. <laughs> so it's just, sometimes it's overwhelming. <laughs> it's challenging. Um, it's not only challenging for the students, it's it can be challenging for the parents. It can be challenging for the instructors. So not only are the kids growing, but I think everybody is um, pulling something positive from the whole experience. No matter, for each individual, something a little bit here, something a little bit there, just pulling what, what they need to help fill what their life is, where their life is going and what their life is doing. Um, I hope to continue working with um, kids. I don't know whether I'm going to continue working with cognitively impaired kids or whether I'm going to work with physically handicapped kids. Right now, I'm, a, I'm at a personal stepping stone in my own life. Um, I'm just leaving Little Cayman after five years. So it's a new beginning for me. <laughs> and I leave in a week. I'm not crying again. 
<laughs> I think I left a bit. I think I leave a little piece of me with, um, I hope, with all my friends here, with all the people that I've dealt with. Um, the kids, Sam, I hope Sam, I hope Sam remembers me, you know. I guess everybody lets go. It's only by letting go that the very person you want to let go is able, in fact, to do that. What an incredible act of uh, creativity you know, when you're doing something totally new, uh, not just for the, the young, sort of cognitively impaired uh, young man or kid or whatever, uh, not just for him or her, but also for the instructor. It's got to be, in, got to be very touching. This is a new program that Oceans for Youth Foundation is developing and I think it's a wonderful pathway for them to go. If they work in conjunction with children with Cornelia de Long syndrome or children with other disabilities, creating awareness that people with disabilities have an important part that they play in, in everyone's lives and in their world is the best thing that can happen. If we can showcase, and I, I use that word, you know, showcase our kids, but they, we should showcase them. Any other child, given you know, similar circumstances that achieve this month in such a short time, should be showcased. The, the challenge for us will be next year we'll celebrate 25 years of the Foundation's history. Our challenge and our board's challenge is to really kick off a mass media campaign. And it is my hope that this project can be part of that that opening up this opportunity through our publications and our website will be able to identify other people who might be willing to you know become educated about the possibilities of this program in how, how many ways can it be duplicated in the world i don't know but if you build a model project and it works as well as this one it can be done by other scuba diving schools it doesn't have to always be done i'm sure in the caymans there's scuba diving right here in Connecticut, where I live. So, yeah, I, I think you've, you've opened up a world of, of possibilities that didn't exist before. Going into the water early when you are young, a boy or a girl, is such a growing up experience. You will find, as I did so many years ago, that all that weight is shuffled off of you. You're free, you're moving, you can just swing your fins, you can soar over a small mountain in the valleys. That freedom to begin with is a most exciting, energizing experience for anybody. He wanted a dive card more than anything and he just kept asking, why can't I have a dive card? I want my own dive card. But we never thought that he would be able to get certified, to go through the work that it would take for him to do it. It was just, we never thought that he'd be able to do it. We bought Timmy for Christmas, a, the class, the scuba class to get certified. So he, he took the class, um, he worked very, very hard. Um, he went with his stepdad, you know, to class two to three times a week. They watched the videos at home and he did the pool work. And as usual, Timmy was the star of the class. They loved him. He worked very hard and took it very, very seriously. It was something he wanted and he was, he was just going to do this. We took our family vacation and Liz, a dive master from Little Cayman, did Timmy's open waters and he passed the test and he got his own card and he had to make sure that he had that card here with him before he came to this camp that he knew that he was going to work with his peers as a counselor in training and he is a role model to help his friends be able to do the same thing that he was able to do. Grampy, he, he didn't think I could do it on my own and I did it to prove him wrong. I, I went to class, read the books, 
watched the videos and went to the pool every Tuesday night. Then went to a carousel, have go diving, finish my open water dive, then I got my card. I was happy. I was running around the house happy. Like this. Ah! I feel like going scuba diving and make me feel equal. It make me feel free. Timmy said something the other day. He says that underwater we're all equal. And that, that's very true. We don't have any disabilities under the war. All we need is sign language and an understanding of scuba and a love of fish in the underwater environment. And to bring that to these kids is very special for all the instructors, especially me. He went into the sea, scuba dived and discovered a new world and with it has grown immensely in both stature and pride in himself, but mostly in having accepted the challenge to go into a world that he didn't know about before. I hope that Tim himself will tell others that they too will by that challenge grow even before their time might have come and find in that experience perhaps the finest one they'll have in their lives on this earth. Well, we're all wrapped up here at Little Cayman and we're ready to go home and what can I say, we're really going to miss these kids. We had a wonderful experience teaching these kids how to dive and they obviously had a wonderful experience learning about the ocean. So until next year, we'll see you then. Thank you so much for inviting me on the outgoing trip. I had an amazing instructor named Ron. He's a wonderful human being. You can tell he loves to help and I know he'll make a wonderful instructor all the other years of this camp. I would like to get certified for scuba diving, so I'd really love to come back next year. Thank you, Oceans for Youth, for making my dream come true. I've done a lot of wonderful things in my life. I, I was a race car driver. I won two New England championships in race cars. I'm an accomplished pilot. To me, seeing Timmy complete the scuba certification test was a bigger joy than anything I've ever, ever done and achieved. Not everyone is able to turn their dreams into reality. I did that years ago, the dream of going into the sea, and has made my life. 
Young Tim also has fulfilled a dream going into the sea. And that scuba diving dream will mean everything to him and all the rest of his life as it has for me. I'm so glad that there are young people sharing that experience and growing into that. Going into this new environment is a great educational experience and opening up of a part of the world that is essential, incidentally, to the survival of the world. As an education, reaching beyond just what we have in our classrooms, in school, beginning, high school, and so on, I think it is a great growing experience, extending our range on the planet that is so covered by water that that is the major part of the Earth's surface. I did that with my own children. I started when I was very young indeed, not even 12 probably at the time, and it has been the greatest educational experience in my whole life and continues to be so. All the years that you grow, you will be adding to that. Well, this expedition had some surprising results. When you looked at the kids' attitudes, their demeanor, their, their body language at the start of the expedition, we were all wondering, how is this going to work out? But by the end, after this incredible underwater experience, they became new people. They became outward going, they became chatty, not so introverted. This whole experience seems to have opened up new possibilities for them. The fact that they are not as shackled as they were before by their disability. And the fact is that they can participate as can normal human beings in one of these, one of the most wonderful outdoor pursuits, which is the sport of scuba diving. It can be carried much further than that to any other kind of sport for any kind of child who suffers some sort of physical or mental disability. This was a huge success. If you'd have told me a week ago that Sam would have been underwater for five and a half hours, I probably would have said, no, nah, I don't think so. And here we are. I got his dive book filled out by his instructor, Liz, today. And right at the end, total hours under, five and a half hours. And that's just phenomenal for Sam. Um, it's something I never thought he could be able to do. I guess I just feel proud. I just feel happy. I feel emotional because Sam doesn't express those feelings and so I kind of have to express them for him. And uh, you know, uh, we've called home several times because we're so excited we want to tell home, hey, this is what Sam did and he, and he accomplished that. And uh, we've wrote a few postcards saying, hey, you know, I, I did this. And uh, as a parent, I just, I'm excited that uh, we set a goal and we came down and we accomplished the goal far exceeding my expectations for, for what was going to happen. You know, I just want to say thank you to Oceans for Youth. Um, I know who you are now, and uh, it's great. You have a great program, great plan. Uh, you've changed kids' lives, changed my life, changed everybody you come in contact's life with this camp. I think these young people are going to go home, and they're going to remember this for the rest of their life. I know I'm going to remember it for the rest of my life. It was probably the most exciting thing that these instructors ever did in their career. And in fact, probably the most exciting things that their parents has ever, ever witnessed in their own uh, children, to see them in the water, experience the underwater environment as they did. In fact, most of the parents even got in the water and swam around with the kids this week. So it was, uh, it was pretty neat. And the experience of the camp was not only better than ever, but I'd say probably the, the most rewarding thing that most of us have ever done.
But it was Ralph Waldo Emerson in the 19th century who wrote, Just do thy thing, and I shall know thee. 